Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, we're going to work on part two of our assignment. So we're working on the rest of the petals, the background, and our circle. So the circle, if you've looked online, um, you can look up some different types of sunflowers and a lot of them will show that there's a darker part to the center and then some, some um, maybe like a, a different shade of your brown and then maybe bits of darkness as well. Okay, so let's start at the center. I'll show you what I did. All right, so what I did, actually let me get one that's kind of similar to this one. And I don't see it. Aha. Oh yes, I do, under there. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so what I did was I took, um, you can either take your masking tape roll um, or you can take a container. So what I could do is something like this put my circle back where it was and just trace my center. If I don't want to do that, I can um, see this circle a little bit better. I could use something like that. So I'm going to try this and see what happens. I'll just place it back into um, the spot where it was and grab my pencil and I'm just going to trace right inside and there's my center. Okay, so we're going to do that nice and dark. So let's take a look back. So here we have a dark circle. So I am going to pull my pencils down here. I pulled out a lot of browns. I even pulled out a, a red, um, something that um, I used right in here. And I could not find a color that I really liked for the reddish brown, so I chose a crayon. And that's perfectly okay to mix your mediums. So you can use crayon and color pencil, um, maybe even using crayon and um, oil pastel. I haven't tried that yet. Um, but these two are, are pretty much very, very similar in that you can use them together. All right, so I took my darkest brown um, and again, the centers are different for different flowers. And I just went in and I just, I colored my circle. Now you can decide to not color your circle first. And actually that might not be a bad idea. You could work on the other parts of the circle or you could put in a, a layer and then go back in like I'm doing. I'm kind of darkening this up because I don't like that it's a little bit lighter. And I do want this to be a bit darker. So you could go back in with a second coat, okay, if you'd like. So back onto this one. So how I started. Let's work on the out, outer ring first. All right. <clears throat> so what I did was I took my um, reddish color here. And what I did was I just kind of outlined a little bit. And um, I wasn't super neat with it. I just kind of... I just kind of made a ring of color and I want to blend into that. So I just went around. Okay. And outlining is a really great idea because when you outline a little bit, then when you color up to that outline, you have a greater chance of not going out. If you make that outline a little bit thicker, which is what I like to do. Okay, so let's get that outline in there. All right. Okay. So then I took um, a reddish brown and I just kind of went in and worked it into my, my red there. Okay, so I chose this one. This is a mahogany crayon. And um, another thing that I like to do is just kind of outline the other space that I don't want to go into. Okay, because I know I'm going to do a darker color there. And if you want to, you can just outline that with your dark brown. But this works just as well. Okay. Sorry, I'm flipping this around a lot here. Sorry about that. keep forgetting uh, you're on, I'm on camera. <laughs> and you're up there watching. All right, here we go. So I outline this a little bit. And then I can kind of just color right up to my outline. And notice I'm bumping right into that reddish color that I that I use. I don't wanna go and just stop right there. I want them to mix and I want them to overlap. Overlapping is really important in blending. 
Okay, and I try to go in one direction, but remember what we said about overlapping and kind of going in different directions? That helps it to blend. Okay, so I can go back in and go in different directions. Okay, and I'm sure you can probably hear my children running around up there. I told them to be quiet because I'm recording a video, but I guess that's not working. All right, so oh, again, and I'm turning it again. All right, so overlapping. And just going right into that red. And if you notice, it, what it does is it kind of pulls that reddish color in a little bit. Okay, and it softens that, that hard line that I have there. Okay, so that's basically that. Pretty easy, right? Now, if you're afraid of coloring on your table, which obviously I'm not, because you can see I've got stuff all over it, um, you can always put a paper underneath it and just color right onto that paper, okay? And that works really well, okay? But most of the time, I just I just run right off my page and I clean it up later, okay? So that's that. And then your darker color, you're again gonna go in and you can start an outline if you'd like so that you don't go out and just press and color. Okay, pretty easy. Let's talk about our background a little bit. Um, I can finish off this circle. So our background, you're going to choose. Okay, I, I, I don't want to tell you what you should do, but I'm going to tell you what I did, and you can go from there. Now, some of the things that I thought about were um, complementary colors. And if you remember anything about complementary colors, and remember we looked at that color wheel, and we talked about analogous colors. Complementary colors are the colors that are directly across the color wheel. So if you remember the classroom, yellow table, you were across from the purple. Orange table, you were across from the blue, and red across from the green. You guys were complements. You guys looked good together. Okay, so what I could think about is, what is yellow's complement? Well, it's purple. Okay, what is orange's complement? Well, it's blue. Maybe I want to do a blue background. Maybe I want to do um, a light purple and a gray, or maybe I just want to do purple. Okay, those are really, really great options, and what they do is they help colors kind of vibrate and look brighter or better. Okay. Now, in this instance, I chose gray, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to show you some pictures here. Um, I looked at George O'Keefe's artwork, and this is a really, really great way of deciding on how to do something. So I just want to show you a couple pictures. So if we look here, we can see that there's this, this um, flower here with a green background. Well, what do you know? A complementary color, red and green, Christmas colors, they help each other look great. This green is helping this red really vibrate. So that's a super awesome option. And it almost looks like leafy and they threw in some darker greens. So you could do that, even some yellows. Okay, um, let's take a look here. Now this page I love because they're using these beautiful purples from this flower, but look what they're doing. It's nice and light, or she's doing, I should say. Okay, and some grays are thrown in there. Let's see. And then my other page wanted to show you was this beauty. I'm gonna turn it upside down though. Bear with me here. So look at that blue back there. It's just so nice. It doesn't have to be all one color. It could be blue fading to a lighter blue. Okay? So these are great things to think about. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I chose gray. I don't know why. I just really liked her soft grays. So actually, I chose a couple colors here. I chose to do thought maybe I'll pull in some blue maybe I'll pull in some purple so I, I pulled them out some different blues a different you know grays here and I got some darker gray and a lighter gray and a medium gray but mostly I used my medium gray I'm going to sharpen this a little bit so we can get it going here all right so how did I do that well I kind of started with an outline like I said I like to do that because it helps me 
um, not go past an area that I don't want to go in. And I kind of just did that a little bit lightly. And then I went a little bit dark. Right down near the center. Okay, and then as I went out, I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. So how did I do that? Well, I just lighten up the pressure that I'm putting on my pencil on the paper. And look how that gets lighter. I'm just going to go lighter still. And I even slow it down a little bit. I'm going to lift up a little bit more, a little less pressure. And notice that you're not hearing it move as much. A little less pressure still. Okay, and it gets even lighter. Now, that looks a little bit um, like I can see where it transitions. I can just go over that a little bit more if I need to, lightly, and try to blend that in. Okay, and I took those light colors right out to the edge. Now, let's say I want to add just a bit more contrast. Now, contrast is like, like light and dark, okay? So let's say I go in with a darker gray. I can do that. Lighten up my pressure as I go out. Okay. And that gives it a little bit more interest. I talk a lot about interest and, and having our viewers um, kind of, I don't know, get excited about what they're seeing. Okay, and I'm even going to do that over here. And I want you to go until you feel like it's finished. Don't just say, oh gosh, I'm just done with this. I want you to think about it. And if you have to, put it away. I do that a lot with my artwork. I just walk away and just say, meh, maybe another day. Okay, so think about what you want to do. Be creative. Think about color. It could be one color, but you can change that color by lifting up on your um, pencil and just kind of making it just a smidge lighter by barely putting down any color. Okay. And um, remember your blending techniques on your um, petals. Um, have a great time. And I look forward to seeing all your lovely pictures. I've seen some so far and they look amazing. Um, I've seen Kai, Kalia, um, Eli, um, Dominic, um, Bella, and they all look so amazing. I can see that you guys are really learning and I really love to see that. So have a great day and see you next time.